so many things going on today. Such a rich day, I couldn't put them all in one video. So after uh, being up in the Jerusalem area, we went down into the uh, Judean wilderness and we passed Bedouin camps and we passed camels and animals. And it's like a moonscape down as you uh, start descending to the lowest place on the face of the earth. And the first stop that we came to, it's almost 30 miles away from Jerusalem, is the authentic baptismal site of Jesus in the Jordan River. And that's where we went next. This is us going down the uh, entryway towards the river, and Amr's explaining it here. We're now arriving at the... Jordan River is not a wide river. It's probably 20 feet wide here. And on the other side, you can see the Jordanians, and you can see Jordanian military on the other side. Just coming down these steps and we're arriving at the Jordan River and it's actually quite high today. These are the reeds that the Bible mentions. Jesus, what did you go down to see? A reed bent in the wind? This is the muddy waters of the Jordan. Right over there is the country of Jordan. Throw a stone over there, it lands in the country of Jordan. There's the military from the Jordanians. And here are some Russians here uh, doing their baptismal rites. Bananas in Jericho have a different flavor. They're known for their bananas. And uh, driving through Jericho. Yellow Palestinian taxis. Arrived at Temptation Restaurant. Hello. 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 How are you? Nice to meet you. Good Welcome. to be back. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to take everybody up the steps here to lunch and uh, get a meeting. It's always a nice restaurant. Hey. How are you again? We got you on the movies here. Oh, thank you. Good to the see you again. Thank you. Nice to see you. All right, here's the buffet lines. Let's see what there is. Look at all these hummus, the best hummus, Turkish salads, cabbage of different kinds, rice, everything can eat, spaghetti, falafels, kebabs over there, chicken, soups, breads, french fries, eggplant, oranges, desserts, and lots of drinks. Hi. Oh. The fresh juices, the pomegranate, the orange, and oh, very nice. Good oh, fresh. Lots of drinks. So here comes our group in for lunch. Jericho is one of the two oases in the Judean wilderness and this is Elisha's spring and we stopped to walk in and see where the water source comes from. We read the passage about where Elisha's threw salt in and sweetened okay, the water. Okay, we've just entered and the, here we go. where the spring of Elisha is. This is the source of water here in 
Jericho, which makes it such a rich place for growing crops and fruits and vegetables. And this is actually the water. This is where the spring of Elijah is, and you can see the water here. And here's the water as it comes gushing out of the reservoir where the spring actually is. Turning Jericho into a garden in the middle of the desert. Much, uh, you know, bad conditions that, that they're living in. But when you make their life better, they kind of have a better spirit. They open up and they're ready to uh, There's a gazelle. Oh, yeah. Read and pray, or they would chant what's called the Psalms of Ascent. Psalms 120 to Psalm 134, there's 15 of them. They're called the Psalms of Ascent. And they're the psalms that you sing on pilgrimage going up to Jerusalem. They're pilgrimage. They were actually called pilgrimage psalms. And on one of them, Psalm 122 is my favorite, I think, is uh, I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I'm standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Imagine you've been walking for a week and you finally get there. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We're standing now after all that walking within your gates, O Jerusalem. You know, this is... And so you can imagine as they're going here, they're chanting and singing those songs by heart. And I just thought it would be cool if we would walk just five or ten minutes on the road, the, the uh, old road between Jerusalem and Jericho. And while we're going, I'll read to you this, the parable of the Good Samaritan, and you'll never think about it the same again. Okay. And he said to him, what is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God in all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. The that two people are walking on now. <laughs> and he fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Which teaches us something, too, that these roads were not safe to walk on alone. You would always go in a group. You would go in caravans. So the people from Nazareth would all come together as a, as a village, and they'd have armed people with them. And there was animals, wild animals. There were thieves. So you would always go in a group for your protection. And by chance. So they leaving this guy on the side. He was laying right there, by the way. Half dead. That's why they That was divine inspiration. Yes. Touch your rosaries there. And by, and by chance, a priest was going down on that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. A priest could not touch a dead body because he would be unclean. So he avoided this guy for religious reasons. And also a Levite who came by and t came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, who is an enemy of the Jewish people, remember that Samaritans are the enemies, was on a journey, came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them, and he put on his own he put him on his own donkey and brought him to an inn to take care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii, giving them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved? Interestingly enough, the next story is about Mary and Martha. We are entering Bethany, which is two miles from Jerusalem. This is where Jesus stayed with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. See, here's what they do when their dumpsters get full. Yeah, it's a different world here.
passing by all the mosques, we finally arrive at the Church of Bethany. This is over the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. We entered the compound, looked up at the beautiful steeple of the church. On the front is the facade of the church are Mary, Lazarus, and Martha. And here they are in order. Entered the church of Bethany, where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived, where Jesus stayed. This was his home base when he was in Jerusalem. This is two miles east of Jerusalem. It's a beautiful church to remember. Jesus is staying here in the resurrection of Lazarus, which we see here in this picture. Lazarus. It's a great story of how we have access to this, which I'll tell you sometime later. I'm not going to go inside. All right. 27 steps down. Same up, probably. Yeah, they go down further. Good. There goes Mark down into the tomb and Tom. This last step is kind of uh, vertical. And there you can see there's a window when they're down in there. Hey Harold, yes. look up here in the window. There you are. Down in Lazarus's tomb. I'm not so sure I didn't have a lot of room once you're in here, sir. We're there. We're there. We're there. We're there. <laughs> Here we see the brave souls who have gone down into the tomb of Lazarus. And up comes Tom from the dead. And our other pilgrims are coming up out of the dead, from the dead as well, out of the tomb of Lazarus. drove back out of Bethany and then on our way up Women the mountains back into Jerusalem. Bethany was quite an experience and people get to experience a real Muslim Arab you town. Have then we went back up into Jerusalem and uh, had a nice dinner at Notre Dame and then I gave a talk and gave my conversion story to about 40 priests here in our group and uh, came along to hear that. Got to bed and ready for another big day tomorrow.